Merry Christmas. Christmas. Just can't say it enough, right? We only get a couple. Well, Merry Christmas Eve. All right, it's true. It's true, right? It's good. Uh, It is so good to be with you here this evening as we take a few moments and think about what Christmas means to us. I think that in all your preparations today, you've been doing that. How many of you have been cooking up a storm already today? Yes, we've got a few. How many of you have been eating up a storm already today? There we go. How many of you have been having arguments about who's going to wear what before you got here? Now, don't raise your, don't raise your hands. Don't, don't elbow. No, no, it's all right. It's all right. I know how this goes. It even extends all the way to the car ride, all the way into the narthex here. I, I get it. I've been there. I've been there. Christmas is one of those things that has so much expectation. We've waited for this for so long. Remember when you were a kid and you waited for this for like months and months and months? Are you old like me where you like circled things in the Sears catalog and got, okay, all right, there we go. I had to introduce that to my kids this year and last year. Target started sending out those catalogs. I was like, guys, you can circle all the things and, and maybe you'll get it. Maybe your parent, they're like, I just text you what I want. I don't need to do that. <sighs> Everything changes, but we still wait We're still excited for Christmas. It doesn't matter how old we are. Uh, We move from being excited about getting presents to giving presents, right? I don't know about you, but as older as I get, the more excited I get about seeing people's faces when they open the presents that I give. Sometimes when it's a silly present, it is a lot more fun than sometimes when they're real ones too. Christmas is an incredible time to just wait and see what God has in store for you. And what I want you to leave here with tonight is an understanding in your heart and in your mind that you are wrapped up with God's love. You're here for a reason this evening, to hear of this incredible story of a God who has come to you to be one of us, to experience the trials and tribulations and temptations and sufferings that we all go through. And yet, he gave himself up for us. He died for us and rose again. This is Easter already. We'll get there in a few months. But he rose again just for you, that you would be wrapped up in his love today and forever. This is this whole story of Christmas. When we think about that first Christmas morning and of this little baby being wrapped up in his mother's arms, in his father's arms, and those shepherds coming to see exactly what God had promised for centuries and centuries coming true in their lifetime. You can't help but be moved by this. Put yourself back with them. Jesus would have been wrapped in strips of cloth, probably rubbed down with a little bit of olive oil and some salt to clean. He would have been held tight by his mother. He would have cried. It was not a silent night. He would have cried quite a bit. There was no sleeping that night, I imagine, not for a while. Not just because of the labor, and the experience of having a child, but because of what this child meant. Promise to both Joseph and Mary was that this child would be like no other. It would be all about how in Jesus, the warmth of God's love is going to be given to the world, and today it is yours. To Joseph, the angel promised that his name would be Jesus because he would save the world from its brokenness. He would save you from your mistakes and your sins. I don't know about you, but I think every family has somebody in the family who is an incredible gift giver. Like they know exactly what people want. They, like they have this uncanny idea of giving just the right gifts at the right time. Does anybody have anybody like that in their family? There's some, okay, there's a few. Now let me ask you the other questions. Does anybody have a really terrible gift giver in their family? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your, don't, 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 don't point, don't elbow. Why is it that we have that experience and not the perfect experience of the perfect gift givers? Well, it's because we're kind of broken. We're we're not perfect. We're we're not whole. When the angel promised to Joseph that Jesus would be the one to save his people from their sins, this, this is what he came for. To save us from our mistakes and our brokenness and our sin that we couldn't get ourselves out of. He comes and he says, I have died for you and I have, I'm alive for you and I give you that life. I give it to you. Can't earn it, can't work for it. There isn't a checklist to get it. I'm going to give it to you. This is my gift to you. This is what Christmas is all about. 
Not only are we wrapped up in the warmth of Jesus, but that knowledge that this gift is given to you means that you are safe. Just like that infant Jesus in his mother's arms, warm and safe, you are as well, swaddled in God's love for you. The angel said to Mary that this Jesus that you are going to give birth to will be so special that his kingdom will never end. And that's good news for you and me, because that means that we are part of that kingdom, that that love that he has for the world is for us and for our children and the generations to come, and it will never, ever end. And you know why else that's good news? Is because Christmas isn't always a wonderful, fantastic time for all of us. I don't know about you, but this year I'm missing quite a few people that I don't get to celebrate Christmas with. It makes it really hard. We don't get to do the traditions that we used to do I'm not going to see or hear from or get a phone call from the people that I loved who are now with the Lord. The promise of Christmas is that in the kingdom never ending means that Jesus' love for you, this warmth and security, holds you tight even when you can't think about anything else but crying. He is there with you. He is holding you up. He is leading you on. You are safe in his arms. You now are one of God's beloved children. You are wrapped up in his love. Now, you also have something to do here as well. Uh, many of you have brought family and friends and kids. And there have been, I think, up here for, I think there's about 100 kids up here already tonight. It's amazing. And I want to remind all these parents and grandparents that you have been given this incredible blessing of family in order to share this love with them. Now, I know it's easy when they're tiny, right? When you get to hold them in your arms and, and they're just, I mean, what? when you have an infant in the home for Christmas, like in your family, you don't need any other entertainment, do you? Everybody just sits and stares and plays and it's just, it's wonderful, right? Until they cry and then you give them to their parents and their parents want, you know, that's a whole nother thing. You are wrapped up in God's love, and you have a job to do. It's like the shepherds. The shepherds were called to see Jesus and experience this love. And then every day after that, they went back to where they were in their regular lives, and they praised God for his goodness. They told everybody that they too could be a part of this. I hope that your Christmas this year changes your hearts and minds just a little bit that you might see not only that you are wrapped up in God's love, that you are safe and secure in his arms, but that in the relationships that you have, in your family, at work, at school, with the people in your neighborhood, you too can share this goodness of Christmas with them through your kindness, through the way you share hope, through the, the joyfulness that you have, through the time that you take for other people serving them, sacrificing part of you for them, giving gifts, right? In all of these things, you show them how much they matter, not just to you, but to God. May you see this gift of being able to share his love with others as one of the most incredible things that you can do in this world. So, Merry Christmas. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with us today, for leading us and guiding us. We give you thanks that you sent your son Jesus to be born on this earth, to be one of us, to know our brokenness, to know what those temptations and our trials and suffering are all about, but to die and rise again, to give us the life, well, the life that you earned. We pray, Lord, that you would remind us each and every day that we are warm and that we are safe in your love. And from that place of security, let us share this with the world helping more and more people experience your joy and know that they too are greatly and dearly loved. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen.